Hello guys, Mikey Bustos here aka Ants Canada bringing you another random but helpful tutorial. This tutorial is about taxonomy and binomial nomenclature, uh, you know, the scientific naming of ants and just basically is uh, created to demystify and clarify exactly how scientific naming works and uh, why we use scientific names uh, to identify ants and other animals. So watch this next video. Taxonomy is the practice and science of classification in biology. It was first established by a Swedish botanist, physician and zoologist named Carolus Linnaeus through a publication entitled Systema Naturae in 1735. He was the first to establish a binomial nomenclature for living things, meaning the scientific two-part names we now use universally. The order of the major taxonomic levels are kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. There are also subdivisions and superdivisions, however these are the main seven levels involved in the classification of living things. Let's follow the classification of both humans and ants. Humans and ants both belong to the kingdom Animalia, but diverge at their phyla, with humans belonging to Chordata, the chordates or animals with backbones, and ants belonging to Arthropoda, the arthropods. Proceeding down each level of classification, the nomenclature becomes more and more specific. The final two levels, genus and species, create the organism's scientific name. When identifying or naming a species, we say the genus and species name. The scientific name of a human is Homo sapiens, and the scientific name of these fire ants is Solenopsis invicta. By the way, both the singular and plural form of the word species is species. There is one species, there are two species. Scientific names are often derived from Latin or Greek, and these names, especially species names, are often named after the person who discovered them, or after the place of discovery or native location. For instance, say I were to discover a new species of Brachymermex in my yard. I would call it Brachymermex bustosi, or Brachymermex torontoniensis. In most cases, the Greek or Latin origins of taxon names are in some way descriptive. For example, the genus Chromatogaster are known for their uniquely shaped gasters. And it just so happens that the genus name Chromatogaster comes from the Greek kremastos, meaning hanging, and gaster, meaning belly. So, also worth noting, is that the first letter of the genus is always capitalized, and the first letter of the species is always lowercase. Also, whenever possible, the scientific name should be italicized. Other things to note are the following abbreviations. The SP abbreviation is used when the actual specific scientific species name cannot or needs not be specified. For example, Camponotus SP means an unspecified species of the genus Camponotus. If you find a Camponotus ant and aren't sure of its exact species and want to refer to it as something, you can refer to it as Camponotus SP. The abbreviation SPP is the plural form and indicates several species. So Camponotus SPP means two or more species of the genus Camponotus. Remember, these abbreviations are not italicized and are always lowercase. SUBSP, or its plural form, SUBSPP, are abbreviations used to indicate an unspecified subspecies. A synonymous abbreviation is SSP and SSPP. The abbreviation CF is of the Latin meaning confer or compare to. This is used to refer a specimen to a known species even though it may not be of that species. It is most often used when an identification is not confirmed. So for example, if you have an ant that you're pretty sure belongs to the genus Camponotus and are almost sure its species is Noveboracensis, but not 100% sure, you can refer to it as Camponotus CF Noveboracensis. At least that way, it lets everyone know that it's what you believe the species is, 
but it hasn't been confirmed. So why do we need to give scientific names anyway? Can't we just give them an official common name? Well, the problem with that is, different organisms are called different things in different languages. At least with a standardized nomenclature, the name Lacius niger identifies the single same ant species whether mentioned in Italy, Brazil, US, Zimbabwe, Thailand, or Transylvania. Everyone universally understands with no confusion what species is being talked about when saying Lacius niger, as opposed to common black ant, de fourmi noir, formiche nere, or hormigas negro, for instance. Also, even within the same language, there can be confusion with common names. The common name potato bug, for instance, can refer to several animals. At least with a scientific name to identify them, there is no confusion as to which species you're talking about. Another example is the name red ants, which can refer to several reddish colored ant species, including some belonging to the genera Myrmica and Solenopsis. So there you have it guys, hope you enjoyed this tutorial, hope you found it very helpful and uh, now you know. So please take care and uh, do spread the ant love. This is Ants Canada signing out.